Hello and welcome to another episode of Perspectives from Lifecycle Insights. I'm Chad Jackson and today we're going to be talking about product line engineering. Let's get started. Now when we start to talk about product line engineering, it's a story that's all about complexity. First off, when you think about uh, products like cars and planes and trains and machinery, you're talking about high uh, part count products. And just making sure that everything works together in that context is one level of complexity in and of itself. And on top of that, when you think about adding in personalization and configuration, that is the second level of complexity. So being able to add options and variants to satisfy specific segments or individuals in the market, there's a lot of different things that need to be managed in terms of those bill materials and components and making sure it all works together and it can all be delivered. The third area is software and electronics. Obviously getting all the, the entire system working and running together, integration and compatibility during test and actually through manufacturing and delivery is a major challenge. Um, so that is the third level of complexity. And finally, when you think about the Internet of Things, which everybody is talking about today, uh, that represents the fourth level of complexity. When you talk about remote monitoring and remote service, making sure it's connected to the right things, either those are devices or back to the manufacturer, there's a lot going on in terms of complexity. Now, when we talk about product line engineering and trying to manage all those different levels of complexity across a product platform or a product family, that's what product line engineering is all about. So now with product line uh, engineering, it's not all about product complexity. There's actually complexity across the life cycle as well. When you think about portfolio management and making decisions around investment uh, and ongoing supportive development projects, you gotta think about that product family and all the different configurations and all those different levels of product complexity that we just talked about. Next, when you think about design and engineering, they need to simulate conceptualize and have detailed design for all of those product variants. That's another level that's very, very complex in the life cycle. Also, when you think about manufacturing, quality, and purchasing, they need to, uh, they need to be able to buy all the components for the entire product family. When you think about production lines, sometimes when a car rolls down a production line, it is actually configured along the way. You can actually have different configurations at different spots in the line. So that's another level of complexity as well. Obviously, when you look at service and maintenance, that's another issue as well because you have to understand what configuration you have out in the field. Also, when you talk about technical publications, you need to be able to customize that publication for the configuration of the product uh, that the customer is purchasing. So in reality, you have product complexity and you have life cycle complexity. And those are two issues that are major challenges for managers in product line engineering. Now, if you look at most manufacturers today, uh, different technologies are a huge enabler in how they conduct their processes. But if you look at product line engineering, uh, there are some specific challenges that are major issues. First, let's look at the different tools used in different organizations at different life cycles during the product development process. If you look at portfolio management, they typically use portfolio management systems to help them analyze opportunities for investments and in ongoing projects. If you shift over and look at engineering and design, they use product lifecycle management, product data management, software configuration management, and a lot more for their operations. If you shift back and look at manufacturing, they use enterprise resource planning and man manufacturing execution systems to understand what's going on with inventory and what's happening on the shop floor. And finally, if you look at service and maintenance, they use service lifecycle management as their tools to track where different uh, calls are being made and where different technicians are going. Now, the major issue here is that if you look at product, uh, product line engineering, there's gonna be change made to those product families. You need to be able to propagate change to all those different systems. And the major issue that is outstanding is there's no meaningful connection between those systems 
today to propagate change across these platforms and families. And that is a major issue for managers of product line engineering. Now, despite the challenges in communicating change across different systems that are in effect in different parts of the life cycle of the product development process, there is some hope because there is a common language that can be used to communicate change. Features. So for example, if you look at portfolio management, features are the capabilities that customers want to be able to buy. If you look at design and engineering, features are the things that manifest themselves as requirements and they are fulfilled by detailed design. Manufacturing, if you look at manufacturing, features are the things that are added or actually delivered as the product rolls down the assembly line. And finally, if you look at service, they actually maintain features and configured variants within the product family or portfolio. So, for, so if, you look, if you think about it, features are the things that manifest themselves actually in all the different phases of the life cycle, but they do it in very, very different ways. Features mean different things to different organizations. Now, why is that important to this conversation? Because features can be used as a communication medium to all those different systems that we talked about before. And that is an opportunity to propagate change across them. So how exactly do features become part of a solution for product line engineering? Well, it's interesting. Uh, you really don't want to replace all those different systems across the life cycle with one monolithic one. That would take a lot of time to deploy and I'm not sure it even exists today. Now, what can happen instead is uh, use a new solution and actually one has emerged around product line engineering. It is the thing that manages features and then communicates changes to those features to all the different systems that exist out there. It fills a gap that has existed for some time. Now the impact of such a system on both the organization and individual can be quite large. Product line engineers no longer need to run around to different departments, getting everybody on the same page and tracking everything in a spreadsheet. The organization could be a lot more flexible the changes that they want to make to the product family and platform without fear of letting errors slip through. Overall, it results in a more cohesive and agile product line. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.